This will be a short tutorial going over the clip curve, the slice curve, and the trim curve, and what the difference between each one of these is. So we're going to start off with the clip curve. Now I'm going to turn on symmetry as well by hitting X on my keyboard. Alright, symmetry is active. So first you need to activate the curve brushes. So this is done by holding down control and shift. So when I hold down control and shift, it will change your brush. This is typically your hide part of your mesh thing. So if you hold down those, it's going to automatically just um, hide or reveal parts of your mesh. But we can change what this control and shift does. So in the top left corner, we're going to click on that. And there are other options below here. So we have the clip curve, the slice curve, and the trim curve. They're all just kind of uh, sections. There's clip brushes in general. There's your selection, which is by default. You could change it from instead of a square, you could have a lasso, which is helpful. Um, and then there's slice ones and trim. So each one of these has different uh, shapes you can use. We're just going to be going over the curve type ones. So let's start this off by going to the clip curve. So now what the clip curve does is it draws a line. When you click on the canvas and draw out, you're going to have a little dotted line with a gradient on one side. So everything on the gradient side is going to be clipped or moved. So you clip off and it just makes a really flat plane right here. And it also does that on the other side, which is really, really useful. So this can be great for making any sort of hard surface things and we need to have a nice flat area. But it doesn't just start with having straight lines. You can hold down control and shift and if you tap once on alt you can have a curve happening. So you can tap another time with alt and another time. So you get a nice little like S curve going here and really interesting sort of shapes. Alternately if you hold down control and shift and then double tap alt really quick you can have a corner double tap alt and get a nice corner just tap alt and you'll get a curve again double tap to corner one tap to curve so that is the basics of using any one of these curve brushes it's so holding down control and shift again i can hold down space bar and move my curve brush all around really nice. Once I hold down control and shift and start drawing, I no longer have to hold down the control and shift. If I continue to hold the shift, I will have um, snapping by five degrees. That's pretty handy. Um, if you want to have exactly like 45 degrees, I'll say right, right in your little heads up display, 45 degrees, I double tap, make an alt, and go to 15 degrees. Some really exact sort of degree angles going here. Alright, so something to mention with this, let's go back a couple steps, and I'm going to turn off symmetry right now. What cl the clip curve is actually doing is it's mashing all of the geometry that's on the gradient side of this line to, um, to the line. So if I'm going on my line here, technically if I'm clipping it here everything upwards is being clipped but this point is wider than what I'm clipping. What this means is if I rotate around it's mashing all of that geometry here but the point uh, this side here is wider when I started clipping it at this point. So it's actually giving that really super thin effect and this can be very problematic. Obviously this is not a great uh, look to this. And it gets even worse when you use Dynamesh. You're going to start getting little holes everywhere in your mesh because it's infinitely thin. So how can you get around that? 
Well, that's where the trim curve brush. This does slightly different than the clip curve. Clip curve, again, will just match the geometry. It's not uh, deleting anything. It's just moving it all into one place. The trim will actually cut your geometry. So we'll choose that as our control shift option. And we'll go beyond the height here. So same thing we did before, about here. If I rotate around, you notice it doesn't have that super thin line because it's actually deleting part of it. You'll notice that it doesn't have that super thin line here because it's deleting the top half rather than just mashing it in. So trimming it off. If I go into my wireframe here, a slightly different polygon group and it's triangulated because it's making new geometry to fill that hole. But, so why would you ever use the clip for curve versus the trim curve, if that's the case? Well, the trim curve does not work with symmetry. So, like I have symmetry on right now. See the two little dots? I'll curve do this side. It does not repeat it on the other side. So any time you do a trim, section you'd have to go to your geometry, modify topology, and mirror and weld. And then you can get it to be the exact same on both sides. So it adds an extra step and sometimes it can be not as nice. But the rest of the curve functionality is the same so if you double tap alt you'll get a hard angle. If you tap alt you'll get a curve. And occasionally it will have the error or it doesn't actually trim it, it just makes a line. So. Let's go back and go to the slice curve. Now if I use the slice, going at this angle, I have symmetry on, nothing seems to change, but it actually is has changed. What it's doing is just, just making a separate polygroup along that edge. So you'd never be able to get this exact angle, this nice flat side here, um, it, because the geometry doesn't support it. But if you use the slice, you can get all sorts of different shapes and polygroups going here. So now I could have this and use this with other functionality. Um, such as the edge loop areas that are really handy with the slice curve. But again, it doesn't work with symmetry, so you have to do a mirror and weld. Uh, I should just make a quick note that mirror and weld only does the left side to the right, or character right to the left side. So to recap, with your curve brushes, you have your clip curve, which is going to work with symmetry, but it's going to mash your geometry to a certain point. So if you have geometry that is at a wider area, like here, then you'll probably want to use the trim curve, because otherwise you're going to get this really thin line happening. As long as you don't go beyond the height of where you're clipping, it won't be a problem, and you can use symmetry. Next one we went over was the trim curve, and this will delete whatever is on that side of the curve of the gradient and make a little new polygroup. Uh, it doesn't work with symmetry, but otherwise it's very nice and handy. The slice curve will not actually change the geometry. Uh, it will just make a new polygroup and add an edge to wherever you have it. So those are your curve options and the differences between them. I hope this tutorial was useful and I'll see you again next time.